Hello and welcome to another episode of No Nonsense News with me, Patrick Christie. So, the 2019 general election is all but over and what a ride it's been. For a lot of people, it's been like a Christmas present come early, watching politicians humiliate themselves in order to get votes. And because a lot of primary schools are being used as polling stations, they've actually had to cancel their nativity plays. Good news for parents right across the UK. But we've compiled some of the best bits for your viewing pleasure, so sit back and enjoy. Firstly, we've got Andrew Neil's brutal savaging of SNP leader and full-time Braveheart impersonator, Nicola Sturgeon. We can watch that now. And it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. No, guys, that's, that's Elton John singing Candle in the Wind, isn't it? Yeah? No, it's actually at Diana's funeral, so tasteless and offensive. All right, tasteless and offensive. Let's try it again. We can see that video now. Hi, everybody. Well, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news for you. No, again, that's an episode of The Crankies, isn't it? You knew that. You knew that was an episode. Of... Look, we're paying you by the minute. All right, anyway, let's do it again. Let's do it again. It's fine. Let's see that video now. Hi, I'm Chucky. Want to play? <laughs> right, now that's just mean. Okay, that is just mean. I'm really sorry about this, everyone. Have we actually got the clip? Do we have? Right, okay, come on then, let's do it. Week two of your eight waiting time targets being hit. You've been in for a long while. You haven't hit the A&E target since 2017. The two-month cancer car target you haven't hit since 2013. Children are dying in a new Glasgow hospital because the water's contaminated, oh, perhaps we... by pigeon droppings. A new multi-million pound Edinburgh hospital, should have opened in 2012, is still unfit to open. You can't even get the ventilation system to work. You've got the worst drug addiction problem in Europe, but you cut drug treatment budgets by 15 million. You clung on to your last health minister. You're under pressure now to sack her successor. I mean, you've called for legislation to protect the NHS from Donald Trump. Maybe the NHS needs legislation to protect it from Nicola Sturgeon. Boris Johnson's been especially good value as well, hasn't he? I enjoyed it when he went to a primary school, probably trying to get ahead of the game, because if Labour win, they'll pass a law allowing six-year-olds to vote. But here he is, literally getting into an argument with a child over whether or not the Incredible Hulk has tits. Yeah. See the Hulk? Yeah, he got his boobies. Boobies. Yeah. What? He's got boobies. It's <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> They're muscles. That's all. That's right. right. And now here he is struggling to remember the words to Wheels on the Bus. Are we ready? The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all day long. To be fair, he was a little bit put off because one of the children started calling him Daddy halfway through. Although, to be honest, I've seen the kid and I think he might be onto something. We are a party that is going to get Brexit done yeah. by, when, yeah. by, January, by January the 31st. Anyway, today Boris was concerned that the ice around his heart might melt. So he hid in a fridge instead of doing an interview with Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain. Can you come on uh, Good Morning Britain, Prime Minister? Oh! oh. oh. I've, just, I've, just had, I've just had a reaction here from one of the minders. You're not getting near come Boris. Look at Prime that. Minister, will you come on Good Morning Britain and deliver on your promise to talk to Piers and Susanna? We're ready to go. We're live on, on ITV right now. Prime Minister, we have an earpiece in my pocket. You're more than welcome to come on. Moving on to Jeremy Corbyn now. I know, where to start? But this is a good one. He was heckled by, get this, an actual church warden as he visited Scotland. Just listen to the terminology the guy uses here. I thought he'd be wearing your Islamic jihad scarf. Well done. Not invited to the funeral. Do you think the man that's mm. going to be Prime Minister of this country should be a terrorist sympathiser, Mr Corbyn? Who's going to be the first terrorist invited to the House of Commons when you're Prime Minister? Ah, he's running away. I love the Scottish. They're just so blunt about everything, aren't they? It reminded me a little bit of this iconic clip of one Scottish football fan's reaction to the catastrophic Icelandic ash cloud event a few years ago. Look at this. No, I hate right. Iceland! So I hate go. Iceland! Embarrassingly, Jeremy Corbyn even got taken down by one of his front bench MPs, John Ashworth, who secretly recorded saying he felt a lot of voters thought Corbyn had blocked Brexit and was a national security risk. Yeah, and in other news, water's wet and it normally gets a bit chilly in winter, doesn't it? Anyway, listen to a bit of this. Uh, you know, if you're in sort of small town Midlands and North, it's abysmal out there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they don't, they, they don't 
don't like uh, Johnson, but they can't stand Corbyn and they think Labour's blocked Brexit. With all these catastrophes, it's led me to wonder, who is actually eligible to become an MP? So I thought I'd leave you with this iconic scene from Blackadder, when Baldrick decides he's going to run for election. Criminal record? Absolutely not. Oh, come on, Baldrick, you're going to be an MP, for God's sake. <laughs> I'll just put fraud and sexual deviance. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>